Kim, I'm afraid to ask, what's on your radar? Well, Ravi, you're going to hate this, but mask mandates are coming back. Wah, wah, yeah. Now, I'm sure that you've heard that Alameda County in California, where Oakland is, has reinstated indoor mask mandates for everyone two years and older. They say it's because they're seeing an alarming rise in not only infections, but hospitalizations and deaths. And interestingly, they're no longer pushing vaccine and uh, vaccine mandates and shaming people into taking one, two, or even three doses. But they're instead back to the basics of wearing masks, which, as a side note, makes us wonder what happens to all the people who lost their jobs or who were smeared for refusing to take the shots when here we are now. So how much did it actually matter in stopping the spread and ending the pandemic? But back to Alameda County's mask mandate. Now, I know this is just one tiny ultra liberal spot in the country. So you might be thinking this won't affect me. We're done with masks. But before you throw them out to the landfill or ocean where billions of masks have now ended up, hear me out. For millions of us in this country, especially those of us living in big cities, which are typically blue, even in red states, you might find yourself covering your nose and mouth once again very soon. Take take, uh, St. Louis, for example. Though the government isn't mandating masks, businesses and tourist attractions are. So you want to visit the Arch, you need to wear a mask. And other private businesses are requiring them as well. So the reason, it's the same one Alameda County states, that cases are rising at an alarming rate. Now, Alameda County's press release breaking the news of the mask rules stated, daily reported COVID-19 cases have exceeded the peak of last summer's Delta wave and are now approaching levels seen during the winter 2020-21 wave at comparable lab-reported testing levels. Reported cases are an underestimate of the total due to home testing and unidentified infections. Okay, and that's fair enough on that last point because I think most people test at home and then never report their positive tests to officials. But if they're sitting at home sick with COVID, what does it honestly matter? Throughout the entire beginning months of the pandemic, what justified the lockdowns and masks in the spring of 2020 was to flatten the curve in order to not overwhelm hospitals. We heard these phrases over and over. Images were strewn about showing sick people crowding hallways of hospitals hoping for care. We heard of endless talk of morgues filling up and refrigerated trucks being brought in. Arenas were turned into hospitals and enormous hospital ships were brought into ports. It was a scary time. But here we are with exponentially more spread than at the beginning of the pandemic. And yet we have yet to hear these sorts of stories of overwhelmed hospitals and semi trucks full of death. Yet we're still mandating masks. I want to bring up that there are many of these mask mandates rolling out. It's not just Alameda County where Oakland is. Uh, And interestingly, in Alameda County, Berkeley is exempt from this. So everywhere else has to wear a mask except Berkeley, California, because they have their own. They're they're in some sort of um, health bubble where they're where they're exempt for whatever legal reasons. But. Other places are rolling them out now, like Sacramento Public Schools. They came back and said, everyone's got to wear masks. Uh, Some universities are bringing them back. So, you know, Robbie, what I'm really interested in hearing from you about is, as a libertarian in the group, now I know that you're very against, as I am, government mask mandates, but private businesses are now coming out, like in St. Louis, and they're implementing mask mandates. And I would imagine that if a bunch of businesses, if there was a high level of community spread, a bunch of businesses might say, okay, it's time to start putting masks on. Everyone's got to wear a mask if they want to come to my business. And other businesses around them feel almost shamed or guilted or pressured into following suit. Or maybe they just think, yeah, I guess that's the right thing to do. Um, So you could find yourself in this weird situation. Like, is it better, do you think, when the government at least uh, mandates the masks, like if I go to Alameda County, right, I know now I'm going to have to wear a mask and carry it, carry it everywhere with me and put it on everywhere I go indoors. But if I go to St. Louis, for example, I don't know, right? One business might say you have to wear a mask. One might say you don't. So you're constantly like checking everywhere. Every time you walk inside of a building, which would you rather do? So I, the, the latter. I mean, I don't want to wear a mask, period. I'm not going to go into a business that requires me to wear a mask at this point uh, unless I have no other choice, I guess. I don't want to wear a mask. And I think that's what most people are. But look, if you have a uniquely like there's a there's a there was a hyper liberal kind of grocery store near here, you know, locally, I don't know how locally owned it is, whatever it is, that's very progressive. And yeah, they had a mask requirement in place, even when the city in D.C. was no longer requiring it. I just stopped going there. That's fine. 
that we, we have to, you know, we have to learn to get along. If you want a hypermasked experience, then you can segregate yourself into, you know, uh, businesses, organizations that cater to your insane antisocial insecurity. I don't want to be a part of it. So I, I would still rather let individuals, uh, individuals and businesses decide than have it required at the level of government. Because when it's required at the level of government, I mean, they're requiring it past what, what the will of the people is clearly, because when the mask mandate gets lifted, then overwhelmingly, like 99% of businesses then say, okay, you don't have to wear it anymore. Sometimes they're not enforcing right. it, even though right. the government is telling them they have to enforce it because they don't want to enforce it. Well, and one one thing is, you know, this was kind of trending last weekend, um, and even I got affected by this, was you know, the airlines are canceling a lot of flights and having Correct. to shift flights around. And, uh, and last week, even when I flew home to Boise, my flight there was canceled, and I got rerouted onto a different flight, and I had to do a layover, and it was really, you know, it was inconvenient. Where, same thing, I'm, I'm getting married here in just a few days. Uh, my family starts rolling in, and we have a bunch of guests starting to roll in tomorrow. Flights are, uh, their flights are being moved around and constantly changed. So it's kind of a hassle trying to keep track of where, when everybody's rolling in. But what, when that happened, uh, social media and, you know, came out and said, oh, see, this is what happens when you drop mask mandates. You drop mask mandates and look at you, Delta. You know, you advocated against them. And now you've got all of these 2,000 flights canceled or needing to be rerouted over the weekend. So I'm curious, Bri, I, I'm curious, what is the point at this juncture in the pandemic of mask mandates we know now, you know the, for a while it was okay mask like i mentioned to flatten the curve to not overwhelm hospitals even with the rise in cases in alameda county they're saying we're seeing a rise in hospitalizations and deaths when you look at the numbers they're still very very low yes it's an uptick oh, from last yeah. week you know they do it by percentage and then it's like okay but it's still low well, I think the reality is for a lot of people that even if those numbers are low, it's your loved one that gets sick or dies or is hospitalized. Or if you're a health practitioner who is, you know, having to deal with that uptick, a friend of mine is a pulmonologist, and I just saw that he was doing a news hit the other day talking about the deficit of ventilators and how difficult it is for him to even treat people because there are these upticks and it's affecting medical practitioners and their ability to actually treat patients for a whole host of diseases that are lung related other than than um, COVID. I spoke recently to someone you know, who works with us whose husband has lung cancer and is very careful to always mask because of his um, uh, vulnerability to COVID for those reasons. So someone who has a store where they enforce a mask policy it might not just be hypervigilant or insane or hyperliberal. They might be someone who's dealing with a pretty significant health crisis at home. Cancer is one of the top, if not the top killer of, of people in certain age groups in America. And I think that it's incumbent on us at the same time that we deal with the frustrations of having some inconsistencies in these policies in the United States, that we also keep in mind that people are dealing with really real health issues outside of COVID that of course can be exacerbated by them. And you know, I, I personally am happy to be sensitive to those and continue to mask also, I just don't want to get sick and I don't want to get COVID. And I, I, I think it's actually a good thing that people are able to have their individual choices and that these businesses, you know, very libertarian minded are able to make those choices that's if they feel like me. that's yeah. what's safe for themselves <laughs> and for their coworkers. That's fine with me. It just doesn't make it. I mean, look, COVID is not going anywhere. So yeah. unless you're committed to masking forever, when you take off that mask, you're going to get COVID. Well, and do, I mean, do these that, mask mandates require, are they, they, I don't believe they're mandating the KN95s, right? They're just saying any mask is the requirement, right, they which we now know, and we now know. And you're allowed to admit, finally, because the progressive uh, health establishment has admitted it, that the, 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 the cloth masks that people were wearing for most of the pandemic uh, are not, do, do very little, very little. Are you uh, allowed to, to say that spread. now? <laughs> is what? that allowed? We, are, we are, you are allowed to say allowed. that. Le Le oh. Leanna Wen gets to say it on CNN, so I, I, I think we should be allowed to say it. You know, for, from that, I take that, you know, I wear higher quality masks. I've worn KN95 masks throughout the pandemic, and I would love to see a government response that made those more available and more cheaply available to folks who do want to mask and have the options at these kinds of places that have mandates um, to go ahead and put it on. What I will you? note that at the arch, you are required to wear a mask if you go inside of a building. It's not that if you stand outside and look at the arch, you have to have right, to mask course, up. Right, right. <laughs> but I mean, are you committed to wearing a mask for the rest of your life? Because co I mean, or are you are, like, I'm just trying to get into the understanding of this. Mm -hmm. So are you wearing the mask, Brianna, and then you're saying, OK, when COVID's gone, I'll take it off because it's not going anywhere. So at what point will you feel comfortable with 
I'm just not going to wear the mask anymore? Or are you committed to the rest of your life wearing it? I don't know. I, I fully respect that other people find it to be very onerous and uncomfortable. Me personally, popping on a mask, you know, I probably have a mask on for all of 30 minutes of my day total when I'm in an Uber <laughs> or in an elevator and otherwise I'm in my apartment or sitting at an outside establishment eating or walking down the street and I don't find it to be especially problematic if it goes on for another year or so i don't see myself changing and it might be the case that i get covid and feel differently after going through that experience i might be less apprehensive about getting it again or i might feel like i have immunity for some period of time and stop wearing it after that but i i don't know i just personally have never found it to be quite as um, imposing as other people although i respect their subjective experiences mm. No, I mean, I totally understand. I don't I don't find them either to be imposing on me. I don't mind wearing it, but I just also don't understand the logic in it after a while. I just think at some point you have to take unless you're committed for life to wearing it because COVID isn't going anywhere. We're not going to end COVID and get rid of it. Then I the logic in it to me is where then I say, well, you well, just got to get COVID. Well, him, are you so. going to wash your hands? <laughs> for the rest of your life. Right, well, you know? right. So that's what I'm that's what I'm wondering. Like if you're committed to it for the rest of your life, that logically makes sense to me. I can get on board with that. I could say, okay, that's your choice if you want to do that. That makes sense. But if people are still wearing a mask at this point and then they're thinking, I'll be able to take it off in a year, what changes in a year? You know, well, that's not, what that's where sure. I don't understand. Yeah. I'm not sure, but I will say a lot of the other I think COVID related things that I've been doing, like I used to get out an Uber, touch the door, go into a restaurant, touch the door, sit down, order fries and eat. And I used to get sick a lot. And now I don't do that because of COVID. And I think I'm enjoying the downstream effects of having not really had a cold since COVID because I think I'm not engaging in some of those activities that I probably shouldn't have been doing anyway. <laughs> so right. I'll be keeping that up for the foreseeable future and, and masking as well. So. Well, yeah, on a different subject, we want to say happy wedding to you, Kim. Oh, I think absolutely. this might be the last time we see you before you're an honest woman finally left. <laughs> 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 yeah, I need to take I I'm I well we're still try, trying to decide if I'm going to come tomorrow <laughs> to the show or not but I definitely doing the radars it's it's tough, right? It's a lot of work as we all know writing these radars and whatnot. And so I've just found myself in these days leading up to the wedding. I'm like, "Oh my gosh, I've got so much to do." It, it's it, it's way harder to plan a wedding than I think anybody realizes. <laughs> and I've never done this before. I hope to never have to do it again. But um <laughs> well, <laughs> but yeah. It's if we don't really if we don't see you, congratulations uh, from all you. of us here in the DC yeah. studio. I and I'll be gone for a while, so I'm not. I'm, I'm taking like almost two weeks off completely because I'm going on my honeymoon the day after my wedding. I am getting on a plane and I'm going somewhere warm and, and wonderful, and and then I'll be back, as you said, Robbie, an honest woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, you deserve it. All right. Well, we'll have more rising right after this. <laughs> 